Minecraft is what I would describe as comfortable survival. You see, you find yourself in a colorful world full of cute creatures and infinite building possibilities. Maybe you want to explore the infinite procedurally generated world. Or maybe you want to build yourself a dream house. Whatever it is, Minecraft lets you do that. Today's mod pack is going to absolutely ruin this. Instead of the usual warm, nice colors of Minecraft, prepare to see the world looking like this. And while I would love to explain to you what every single mod does, I think you should just watch the video and, uh... Is that, uh, who I think it is? As soon as I get to the menu, I'm immediately met with a bad omen. Anyways, I create a new world, name it appropriately and immediately hop into the gameplay. Also obligatory disclaimer that I only made my custom skin after recording. So you'll have to deal with this CSGO guy for now. Also a second obligatory disclaimer, I actually removed a couple of mods halfway through the run. Just because they didn't really add anything or because they would spam sound effects. While I was in the process of stealing someone's belongings, I was interrupted by whatever this thing is. Being quite the smart fella, I knew I had to build myself a bunker. Here the monsters would hopefully not find me at night. After a short amount of digging while living under horrifying ambience, my house was looking uh, pretty garbage actually, it's kind of trash. Regardless of what kinds of unspeakable hoarders I heard up there, I knew I was safe down here. Or at least I seriously hope I'm safe down here. Yippee! On day two, the thing is back. Its motives are unknown. Anyways, in my test run I found out that shields are incredibly overpowered. So I rushed to find iron to make one. the first thing I make is an iron sword. My mod pack has quite a few fair horror monsters, meaning that they're strong, but they can be defeated. With this mod pack, you absolutely never feel safe. Needless to say, I just ran in the opposite direction of whatever made that sound. Also, I stared at this furnace for a really long time. Since the monsters I'm fighting deal so much damage, I actually made two shields, in case one of them breaks mid-fight. I make quick work of a skeleton and then go to a structure I saw that I wanted to check out. Heading inside, there were all sorts of goodies, including some random ores and pretty much a full set of iron armor. After finding a secret basement, I noticed that there is... something happening down here. And I want absolutely nothing to do with it. After breaking into the second floor, I find a lever hidden behind an armor stand. I flick it and proceed to hear this. While I'm swimming back, I hear this... And then, uh... Then my game crashes. This happens a lot. Alright, so... How about we just... Never go back there. Since I wasn't feeling safe enough, I replaced my door with an iron door.
Anyways. At this point, I am such a paranoid schizophrenic that the moment I see something glowing, I immediately zoom in because I think it's something watching me. Send help. I'm a brave boy. Not a brave enough boy for this! Shortly after changing some settings in my shaders, this godforsaken thing appears and tries to kill me. And then my game crashes. After making my way back, that thing was thankfully gone and I continued mining. The next day I went to inspect something I had seen on my map. It seemed to be a large cave of sorts and I wanted to see if it had any loot. Before I had even realized it, the f rake was following me. As you can see, I wasn't joking about this shield being necessary. Somehow I timed all of my blocks just right and eventually it was dead. Not only did I survive the encounter, but I actually just killed the rake. Anyways, as you can see the cave it was defending was actually quite huge. In fact it was so deep I couldn't even see the bottom of it from up here. I didn't feel like risking my life in that cave, so I checked out this little tent. Since my day wasn't going bad enough, the game decides to spawn in a second rake. At first I tried running away, but it quickly caught up. As you can see from my shield's durability, I wasn't lying when I said I would need multiple. Even with full iron armor, it still deals two and a half hearts of damage, so it's pretty strong. And while I was happy to survive, it made me think. I'm currently in a world where the Rake is one of the weakest monsters I have to fight. I do not want to meet the stronger ones. As I got home, I read that Day 43 book I found. It seems to be talking about Herobrine. I am absolutely not dealing with whatever just made that sound. Did you catch that? Because I absolutely did not. In case you didn't notice, Herobrine disappeared in literally 3 frames. This means I had about 50 milliseconds to react to him on my screen. The average human reaction time is about 5 times as much. As is per usual now, while I was trying to collect some wood, I was rudely interrupted by screams of some demonic entity. Whatever made that sound is definitely not worth 53 planks, so I just ran in the opposite direction. My plan for this world was to create a mostly monster-proof observatory at the top of this mountain. After clearing out a little bit of space, I started working on the base. The tower was going to have to be pretty much impervious to most monsters. This meant iron doors, stone walls, no windows, and something to stop them from climbing up. As the sun was setting, I decided to dig myself a second little bunker here. This way I could sleep safely without having to walk all the way back home. As it turns out, the mountainside has iron. This is good because it means I don't have to go into the caves. As you can see, I'm an expert architect. Then I added a little second floor to my bunker. There was no real reason to do this, but I thought it looked cool. While mining out some iron, I saw something in the distance that caught my eye.
This book was titled Day 37, and combining the fact that it says this with the fact it was on top of a Herobrine shrine, I think it's pretty obvious who's gonna be haunting me soon. After walking back to my village house, I see that there's pillagers on my roof. Like, how? And, uh, I mean, yada yada yada, more boring building. I mean, who even cares about this? Let's just skip to an interesting part, alright? Well, on a pretty boring looting run, I found this cool looking cave and decided to check it out. Absolutely nothing could have prepared me for what was about to happen. I start making my way down and fight a skeleton creeper. I deal with a second creeper that showed up and keep making my way down this cave. All things considered, it's actually pretty quiet in here. In fact, it's a lot emptier than I would expect it to be. As you can see by my mouse movements, I was absolutely not okay. And to make matters worse, this isn't even the last encounter with that thing. This weird ambient music that just kept playing for literal minutes after encountering it made me feel like I had just uncovered some eldritch god sleeping in the cave. That's when the game decided to throw out a brand new jump scare sound, just to throw me off. And as if to mock me, the in-game music is this peaceful, serene track, as if I didn't just encounter, like, an elder god in the cave. Let's just say this mod pack has a whole new meaning to that message. And I definitely don't want to find out what's stopping me from sleeping. The next day we wake up, we take out a creeper and have a second encounter with the villager thing. Looking back at the footage, I'm not sure if I opened the trap door or if the villager did. But what matters is we had a fight in the stairwell. Also a quick reminder that the game audio is currently being toned down by 20 decibels. This sound was horrifyingly loud in game. Eventually though, almost at the cost of an entire shield, it goes down. I guess that's another monster we killed. We can add that to the record books. Aside from that early morning encounter, the rest of the day was pretty boring, as it was mostly just working on the tower. If you don't know what that message means, it means that I'm f The best way to go about this encounter is to simply accept my death. Anyways, I got back to work on the tower. Ow. One day while exploring, I made the unfortunate mistake of stepping into a cave, where I promptly met another rake. Ow. So I got jumped by the rake, the one who watches and Herobrine, all at the same time. 
Believe it or not, despite everything, I still haven't learned my lesson and I went into yet another cave. This has literally never gone right for me. Like most caves, I slowly make my way down with torches. Somehow I didn't take that sound as a warning and went right back down. Um, excuse me, what the actual fuck are you doing in my house? Then I had an absolutely agonizing night where I was just sat here the entire night. Regardless of things such as basic survival instincts, I just kept going into more caves. What's different about this cave though is that I was about to go somewhere that I really didn't want to be. Any sane person with just iron armor wouldn't go into the deep dark. However, I am mentally deranged. Then the warden obliterates me through a wall. Being an absolute genius, I build myself two pickaxes and proceed to dig directly down to where my loot was. The plan being to get in, grab it and just get out. While digging my way up, I actually find myself inside a pretty populated cave. As per usual with this godforsaken thing, by the time I look back, it's just gone. It seems to stay in the cave, so I just go back outside to work on my observatory. Then I get tormented by extremely quick footsteps all around me. This went on for far longer than I would like to admit. Still going, even the next day. In order to stop creatures from crawling at my walls, I just place down a little overhang which then actually doubled as a small little terrace of sorts. The fact I'm not dead means that my tower is at least somewhat resistant to those monsters. As you can see, my observatory is doing its purpose. There is a second reason why I was up all night in the observatory. I wanted to end the video on not only some nice footage, but something a little symbolic. You know, having a pretty much safe base went pretty well with the sun rising and the monsters mostly disappearing. That's why I waited the entire night just to get this footage. 